Hi and uh, welcome to this explanation of how the 5 tick ring counter works. I'm just gonna load it up. And uh, this is the entire thing. Plus some added circuitry just to show how it works. Uh, in order to show this off I have uh, made a small uh, pulse generator so that this block gets uh, a timing signal. Um, the input for the entire circuitry comes in here. It's an edge trigger which gives uh, two to four tick pulse. Uh, two to four tick clock pulse uh, enters these, these uh, AND gates. Each AND gate is connected to an RS NOR latch that can hold uh, a token and pass it on to the next gate in the circle. So if we take a gander to the top where um, most of the gates and latches sit, as you can see here, one of the inputs is pulsing along with the timing signal. This is the input signal. It goes to all the gates. It's distributed from a central location. The reason for this is that there is um, a quirk with uh, pulsed signals. They can only travel so far before they dissipate. Uh, and they can only go through one repeater when you use a short pulse like I have done here. So, let's start with the first RSNOR latch. Uh, whenever a latch receives uh, the token signal, it goes to a high and it will remain on until it is giving a reset signal. What happens is that when this goes to on, it will hold this torch in the off position. That is, this side of the AND gate is on or active. And the second side of the AND gate will be triggered by the clock which will then trigger an activation of the second RSNOR latch. Now in order to not saturate the entire clock by having all the gates go to high, each gate will send a reset signal to the previous RSNOR gate in the circle. In this manner, each of these modules comprising of our RSNOR, a delay to prevent uh, runaway reactions. Uh, it's actually only needed to have one torch delay, one tick delay, in order to not have the clock signal be on on everyone while the signal ticks forward. It will, it will tick two steps forward if this happens. So, safety, there's um, a repeater here. Uh, although uh, you could use the reset instead and uh, use only an inverter. But uh, this allows to have an orientation that seems more space efficient. As I said, the token gets sent forward. The last one gets reset to zero and so forth. It goes all the way around here. As you can see, there's four sections. So it counts to four. It then sends the signal down to the fifth gate, which then sends the signal back up this way. As you can see it sends the signal up here. Uh, the f nice thing about this ring counter, uh, ring counter is that it's fully modular. You can add or remove counters. That is, it's fully plausible to have two full floors, count to eight, or you could stack them vertically uh, and uh, propagate the signal up the side and there is a signal down the other side and basically have an infinite counting loop like this. Uh, and it will basically look the same except instead of being 
four stacked around in a ring like this, they will be every other stacked on top of each other. Uh, basically, this uh, makes it into a very efficient counter. It uses, I think, the least amount of redstone parts possible. It also uses the least amount of volume uh, possible. If you were to make a similar counter, uh, at least in the 5 tick area, uh, with uh, T flip flops, uh, you would need three flip-flops and uh, additional logic to decode the signal and uh, a lot of additional wiring so you could reset the counter whenever you hit five because a uh, three-bit uh, flip-flop counter uh, does count further than five it's not and uh, it's not exactly easy to access uh, the reset point in uh, those circuits Uh, as you can see, I used a door as an example of output. Uh, this door is now ticking every five compared to the more or less second long ticks uh, from this uh, fairly long duration uh, pulse generator. Uh, this circuit could easily be connected to, say, um, the minecart smart booster system. Uh, you could adapt it, you can use as few or as many of these counter cells as you like. Uh, so say if you used only a single booster, uh, you could increase this to a 10 count instead. Uh, Albeit uh, that would make uh, for very long warm ups of the booster system. Uh, but you could also adapt it so that you could have faster boots, boosts. Uh, if you have a shorter shorter um, distance to travel, uh, you could use a two or three count. Uh, everything's plausible with this setup because it's fully modular. Uh, as you can see, all of these parts they are more or less identical. Uh, the only part that all of these circuits do need to have they need to share a single edge trigger it has to be a single one otherwise the timing will uh, be ruined uh, so in a way uh, you cannot stack them horizontally in a line for instance um, that would cause you to go over the 15 tile limit for a single redstone line and you would have to have a repeater on this single on this um, timing signal and uh, if you do that the timing signal breaks and the gates will not trigger anymore um, adding a longer uh, timing frequency uh, is plausible but it's much more trickier than vertically stacking and keeping everything within uh, the 15 tile limit uh, this edge trigger has only a single inverter as you can see here there are no more redstone torches until it enters the gate uh, because there's simply each torch reduces um, the number of ticks on the duration of the pulse by one you can actually see it here you can see this pulse lasts slightly longer than the pulse here does uh, and for each torch it is reduced, so uh, any shorter pulse than this, and this gate will no longer trigger properly. This torch will trigger, but this torch will not. Uh, you need to have a two tick delay after this in order to trigger this and get the RSNO latch to actually change the state. Uh, this is the basic demonstration. Um, if people are interested, uh, I will make a tutorial on how to mage each cell and how to connect them together. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, leave a comment and subscribe, essentially. Because uh, if you do, uh, you will get a message when I eventually do make a tutorial. Uh, but I'm not going to make a tutorial unless people actually are interested in seeing one. Uh, making stuff like this is actually quite hard work and uh, tutorials are especially hard work because you really have to plan everything out but enough babbling for me 
uh, as you can see this is a fuller working system this could be directly connected to the smart booster and give you the maximum boost it will time it perfectly uh, all you have to do is replace this circuit with um, the pressure plate used uh, in the smart booster to count how many laps the booster has gone and this wire here will then connect to the junction uh, at the end of the counter the junction that sends the booster out to boost the player uh, in his cart away so that's it for me and uh, happy minecrafting